Hello, two beautiful guys. How have you been these days? Today we're gonna start learning a super cool game, which is one of my favorite and satisfying games, Fruit Ninja. Actually, I've chosen it because of its concept, and that we've never talked about it. And this might be really helpful for you guys if you want to start making complex and professional games. Okay, let's get started and focus on fruit and how they're gonna move through the game. First of all, I have to declare that finding fruit ninja asset is extremely hard and you can rarely find one of them. So in this case, I've tried to use some similar fruits and thing which it feels more familiar and I'm gonna show you each of these sprites and their costume to make it clear for you and help you somehow to have a good vision to what you're supposed to bring to your game. The essential thing that we have to learn through this game is gravity and how can we code it in a scratch. For sure, gravity has two specific elements which we can consider. The first one is that each of your objects which comes up is going to return and come down to the ground. The second element is acceleration. As you can see here, the space between two clones which are made here is bigger than those on the top. It can show that between making clones, you moved slower and you totally understand that your speed has gotten lessened. This specific negative acceleration makes your down movement faster and faster. So, let's try it out with this watermelon and code the gravity for this watermelon. So, uh, we first wanted to actually code for clones, not for just uh, this actual sprite. So, I wanted to hide this actual sprite. And I wanted to actually create clones randomly for myself. And uh, so for this part, we need a forever and we need the wait, which uh, I don't want it to know uh, how many seconds uh, it's gonna wait for me. So I wanted to pick random here from one to five and then create a clone for myself. After that, I wanted to code the gravity for these clones. I wanted to throw up uh, this watermelon and then uh, make this watermelon comes down with a specific acceleration uh, to feel the gravity. So, uh, for this part, first of all, we have to show the clone and then make this watermelon goes up and then comes down and for this we want just to change the y and change the y position for ourselves and for this part we need the forever and a change y by and i wanted to reduce this number one by one to actually uh, reduce the movement and make it slower and just after that comes it down with a higher speed so in this case we need a variable we go there and um which called we need the variable which called y position and i want this variable to be specific for this sprite okay and then i'm gonna actually set this y position to um 20 and after that after each movement, I wanted to change this Y position by minus one and then say uh, that change Y by Y position. So in this case, your movements are going to be like the gravity and make your movement slower and then it makes you come back to the ground. So let's try it again. But first of all, we need another thing here. We want to address this uh, specific clone um, to uh, y position minus 180 and a random x position. For x position, I don't want it to pick random um, 
240 to minus 240 because they're gonna be so near to edges and I don't want to so I'm gonna pick random to 200 to minus 200 a little farther than edges okay let's try it out yeah it's working and it's great and it's awesome so after that we can just change something here we can just change the uh, y position and make it higher make it to move higher in this case it's gonna be here and i think more than this uh, it's not gonna work and be properly in a screen so in this case i wanted to set y position a random number between 20 to 24 yeah it's great and the other thing that we can add here and uh, whenever we actually comes down i don't want it to have lots of clones here i wanted to delete all of these clones but i can't actually say if touching edge uh, just delete this clone because uh, you're gonna start uh, from y minus 118 and it actually touches the edges so uh, in this case when you just say that if touching the edge delete this clone or stop the movement uh, it's not gonna work uh, at all so in this case we need a if clause and say that if um, for example y position y position is less than minus 180 just delete yourself or delete this clone so in this case we don't have any other clones here and all of these clones have deleted so it's working properly and now i just wanted to actually uh, add an X movement here, right and left movement here. So in this case, uh, we need a new variable, a specific variable called X position. X position. And then set this X position to um, maybe something. Uh, randomly between minus one and minus 10 to 10 and then I wanted to change X by X position but I don't want to change X position each time because if I wanted to do that um, the movements are gonna be so fast and I don't really want to be um, like supernatural movements so uh, in this case I just uh, wanted to add change X by and then um, put the exposition variable here so let's try it out yeah it's working properly and naturally but um, for each time in um, fruit ninja game if you wanted to um, move x and wanted to move this watermelon to left and right it's better to divide this set x position to two parts and for this part, we need an if else block and say that if your x position, your real x position is bigger uh, is bigger than zero, it means that it's positive, set x position to zero to minus ten because if it is here, I wanted to throw it this way. And if it is here in the um, negative x position, I wanted to throw it here and um, to the um, positive one. So I want to, if x position was bigger than zero, I wanted to set x position to pick random uh, this number. And if it's not, I wanted to set x position to zero to 10. And it actually makes your watermelon move more in your screen and be in your screen more than other times. And that's it.
as you can see it's working properly and then it's time to actually copy all of these codes for other sprites here but uh, be careful that you have to actually uh, make your specific variables for each of your sprites and then copy these things because if you just copy these things and don't have any other sprites here uh, it will remove all of these blocks and it will ruin all of your codes so be careful that first of all make these variable for each of your sprites and then copy these blocks to them Thank you guys for watching, hope you liked the first episode of this tutorial, don't forget to subscribe and like it, it's a big motivation for me and we'll continue this game by forwarding episodes and see you soon!